right. Well, welcome to House of Purpose. I'm Pastor Nancy Buckner, and I'm filling in for our worship pastor, uh, Pastor Kim Rocks. She is on vacation for her second week. We are going to be so thankful to have her back next week. We're looking forward to that. Uh, but in the meantime, I really would love it if you all would help me sing uh, when we do the songs for worship. And I'm going to first of all open us up with a word of prayer. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everything that you do for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you that this is the day you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would bless everything that we do here today. And Lord, we want to honor you with our worship, Lord. We want to just praise you and uh, just tell you how much you mean to us and how much we love you. And I pray, Lord, that you would find this pleasing uh, to you, Lord. And I just pray that you just help all of us, Lord, just to enter into worship, Lord, just to cast every care upon you because you care for us, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And then I do have a scripture for you. Pastor Kim always brings us a scripture. So I want to read you a prayer. This is something that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians. And it, this is something that we pray over House of Purpose. It says, this is my prayer for you, that your love will grow more and more, that you will have knowledge and understanding with your love, and that you will see the difference between what is important and what is not, and choose what is important that you will be pure and blameless for the coming of Christ, Amen. that your life will be full of the many good works that are produced by Jesus Christ to bring glory and praise to God. And that is out of Philippians uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. And that is a great prayer. And I believe it's true here at House of Purpose. You all have the most love of any church I've ever been in. So that's definitely true. And so we're going to begin to sing. And so if you are able to go ahead and stand with us and sing along with me Amen. help me out today and we are going to be waiting here for the Lord's presence to come if they can move the mountains let the mountains move we come with expectation Waiting here for you i 
this next song, Worthy is the Lamb. This is something we're going to be singing when we get to heaven. Because it says that in Revelations, that this is what they're already singing around the throne.
And w next we are going to do Shout to the Lord. Okay. So this is something really good for us to be doing. Shout to the Lord. He deserves it, doesn't he? He deserves our praise. over to Pastor David for some announcements. Can we have that back light on, please? Thank you. Kindly. Kindly and terrific. You know, we have some announcements. I know Friday, Friday, I say Friday, Friday. Uh, Friday. not Saturday, but Friday. Friday. This coming Friday, oh, we're going to do Sidewalk Cafe. They say it's going to be 55, but I believe it's going to be a little bit warmer. 
Can we believe that by faith? Amen. Amen. Let's put our trust in God. We know we got a God that changes the weather. Look what Jesus did. He calmed the storm. Amen. Amen. So we're excited about that. And then also Tuesday. Uh, you know, people have been asking about Tuesday, what we're going to do on Tuesday. We're going to do a Bible study. So you'll have both men and women. So you'll eat together. Then we'll go into separate rooms, the men and the women, so that they can talk freely. And about in church on Sunday for that Bible study. So it'll be food first. It'll be at 5 o'clock. You'll have to ring the doorbell to get in. But first you have to sign up on the list, too, so that we know that you're coming. It, yeah, because in this kind of environment right now, we're going to have to do it that way to make sure that everybody's safe. Um, so uh, Pastor Kim is going to be leading the women's Bible study and backed up by Amy. And then um, uh, Matt, are you involved with the men's Bible study? 10-4. Good buddy. Yeah, and, and, and Max will work with Matt in the, on the men's side of the Bible study, and that will be the October 27th. October 27th. What's that? <laughs> it's going to be yummy? Yeah, we got good food. Good food and the word to digest. Miracle Lunch is November 7th. You're going to be able to watch some of it online, those that are able to attend it at Encounter Church. It's, it's a fundraiser for House of Purpose. So we're going to have uh, Ms. Colorado Teen is going to speak. And how many of you know Reverend Leon Kelly with Gang Alternatives? Oh, yeah. Amen. He's going to speak also. And uh, Roy Hanschke from the Point of Faith radio station is going to uh, be the MC of, you know, Master of Ceremonies. We're going to have a couple testimonies. And we're going to unveil a, a special video for House of Purpose. So be a part of that. We can connect you online. But also you can connect through our Facebook page, okay? And Nancy's going to lead us in our offering. All right. Yes, like David said, we're going to worship the Lord with the giving of our offerings. But first I want to mention that if you have a prayer request, oh, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> we know Catherine's always good about turning in prayer requests. She believes in the power of prayer, don't you, Catherine? Oh, yeah, Amen. So if you have a prayer request, it's a blue or a yellow card at your seat. You can fill that out, and if you want to just slip that in the offering when it comes by, uh, we will pray for that. And so Catherine's already got several cards filled out. So you'll want to take advantage of that. And so while you're preparing uh, your prayer requests and your offerings, I want to continue something that I started a few weeks ago about taking action and stop procrastinating. You know, and we've been talking about this, that um, this is actually a really big problem for a lot of people. You know, we talked about how it really can affect your entire life. You know, that people, um, it's affecting their jobs, their credit, their relationships, because they just can't seem to take care of the things they need to. And one of the huge things that I think is true about it is that there's a purpose that God made you for. You know, and if you can't even handle, like, the, just the normal everyday things of life, how are you going to accomplish the purpose that God has for you? So this is really something important because you were made on purpose for a purpose. I want to assure you of that. God knew exactly what he was doing when he created you, and he has something specific for you to do. And so we're going to have to be able to take action to do that. And we've been looking at Daniel 11.32, uh, which says that the people who know their God will display strength and take action. And so I really feel like this is a very key for being able to stop the procrastinating and starting to do the things that we need to do. And I've already spent two weeks talking about being a person who knows their God. You know, we've talked about that we need to know God, uh, that that can only come through spending time with him, for one thing. You can, you can only get it through experience. Your mom can't know God on your behalf. You know, if that's <laughs> what you're counting on. You have to know God on your own. And God wants to have a relationship with you. Like last week we covered that God knows you and that God is for you, that he wants to have a relationship with you. And I was going to move on to displaying strength today, but while I was doing some studying, I, uh, I ran into something by Derek Prince, actually, that I just really thought was powerful. I just felt like that I needed to do this today. And so this is a picture of Derek Prince, uh, just in case some of you are not familiar with him. Um, but he was a Bible teacher 
who uh, lived from 1915 to 2003. <laughs> okay, there. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, but he lived from, 2000, from 1915 to 2003, and he went all over the world. Um, his website says that he went to 140 countries, which I know is a bunch. I'm not quite sure how many total countries there are, but there's not a whole lot more than that. You know, so maybe he skipped Antarctica or something. But uh, any <laughs> anyway, he's been a lot of places. And one thing that he mentioned when he was older was that he found that he really thought most people are not really that interested in knowing God, for God. You know, like they're interested in receiving something from God. You know, they're, interest they're showing up at church because they want a healing or they want to, you know, get a promise from God. But he was like, there's not that many people actually interested in God. You know, and I really felt like this kind of spoke to, to my heart as well. You know, about, I don't want to be a person who's seeking presence rather than seeking God's presence, right? You know, and you can even kind of just go through the motions. You know, that's something I was noticing within me. Like, even when I practice worship, you know, one of the things that I do is I try to sing these songs ahead of time. But it's very easy to just start singing them and not really doing them as worship, right? You know, you're just sort of going through the motions. So it can be very easy to do that, to just keep doing the things you normally do. I read the Bible, and then I pray, and then I'm on to my day kind of thing. And I don't know if you have the same problem I do, but I can very much tend to compartmentalize my day. Sort of like, this is my God time. All right, this is on to the rest of it. You know, and not really be that cognizant of God's presence not necessarily pray all the time. I know David's always telling me, aren't you praying all the time? I'm like, no, actually I'm not. <laughs> Which isn't good, you know, because the Bible says to pray continuously, right? Pray without ceasing. You know, and I really think he just wants us to turn our hearts toward him. You know, Bill Johnson talks about that, that he tries to always just turn his heart towards God. You know, so even this week I was trying to be careful about doing that. Like if I'm relaxing or something that I'm just sort of taking a moment. God, thank you. Thank you for a chance to, to rest a little bit. Thank you for the beautiful weather we've been having. You know, just kind of take some time to acknowledge him, thank him, you know, and then listen to him. If you have any decisions to make, uh, it's really good to ask him. Like I find sometimes in, when I make mistakes, it's because I didn't pause. I had a decision, and I just decided I knew best. I didn't bother to ask, and then find out later, uh-oh, I should have asked. I should have <laughs> asked God about that. He would have told me the right thing to do. So there is someone in the scripture, though, who this really reminded me of, and it is uh, Abraham, actually. And let's look at Genesis 15:1, And it says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. And this was before Abram was about to get a big, a big promise from the Lord. The promise that even though he was older, I think, what was he, 86, I think, at this point, or something like that, uh, God was going to tell him, you're still going to have a son. I know it looks bad. <laughs> looks like it's not going to happen, but you're going to have a son. And you're going to have so many descendants that you can't even count them. God's about to give him that promise, but I find it interesting that the first thing God says is, well, really, I'm your greatest reward. Not all the blessings, not the things that I'm going to promise for you. It's your relationship with me Amen. is your exceeding great reward. You know, and so I think that that's really a good thing to keep in mind. And your relationship with God will only be as strong as the focus, time, and attention that you give to it, Right? You know, so this is something that you want to really focus on. And as I was reading in Genesis, there were a number of places where it records that Abram built an altar, and then he sought the Lord at those places. And I just think that, you know, the scripture isn't recording every single thing that he did in his life. So the fact that God is recording that he did all these things means it's significant to God that he built that altar and that he sought the Lord at that time. And, you know, I just want to encourage you that today is a new day. Even if you haven't done this in the past, it's a brand new day. You can start doing this now. 
And, uh, you know, God spent time with Adam and Eve. You know, back in the garden, that was how God really wanted it to be. And it says that God spent every day. He would come and visit Adam and Eve in the garden. It said, and he wanted to have that relationship. You know, so I want you to know that, that God wants a relationship with you. You know, if you've ever even kind of thought, oh, God doesn't care about me. Or, you know, God doesn't want to hear from me. You know, I can't go to God. You know, all of those things, those are all lies from Satan. Yeah, it's pity party. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I call, I ah, that's right. So, so he wants to spend time with you, and there's a really interesting compliment written about Abraham in James two twenty three. It says that Abraham believed God, and because of this faith, he was accepted as one who was right with God. Abraham was called God's friend, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be awesome to be called God's friend? I mean, I would love to have God say that about me. This is my friend Nancy. You know, that would just be an amazing thing. And so we have an action for us, since this is about taking action. And it's written on the back of your bulletin as well, to remind you. But every day pray and tell God that you want to be his friend and ask him to reveal something about himself to you that day. And I believe that he's going to do it. So this will be something to do for the next seven days. And we're going to receive our offerings and the prayer requests now. And so as you do that, I just wanted to give you just a few ways to give. And here at House of Purpose, we give so others may live by faith in Jesus Christ. And so you can text PURPOSE to 45777, or you can go to houseofpurposechurch.org and go to online giving. Or for those of you on Facebook, uh, we have the address there on the screen. Uh, but we are just knowing that God wants to have a relationship with all the people out here in this neighborhood, you know, and also behind there. God wants a relationship with every single one of them. And as you give, you're a part of helping to get Jesus to those people so that they can know that as well. And so I'm going to pray over the offering and the prayer requests. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everything that you do for us. And Lord, we thank you that you want to have a relationship with us. Lord, we're just really blown away by that, Lord. You know, that that's what you want. The God of the universe wants to spend time with us. And I pray, Lord, that you would help each one of us just to remember that, just to acknowledge you as we're going about our day, Lord. I pray that we would also just remember to spend some time with you and to focus on that relationship. And, Lord, I pray that you would also bless each one who's giving. Pray, Lord, that you would bless them, take care of their needs, Lord. And we pray also over every prayer request that's coming in, Lord. You know all the details of those situations, even more than what's expressed on the card. But, Lord, I know that you will do your perfect will for each one, Lord. And we thank you for that. And your word says in Psalms that you bend down to hear those prayers. So we thank you for that. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, this is called This Little Light. And it's talking about the fact that we are to be lights for the Lord. You know, and it's kind of a, can be a dark world out there, right? But that's when the light shines the brightest, isn't it? In a, in a brightly lit room, you don't hardly see a candle. But you can really see a candle in a dark room. So let's shine our little lights.
special message for you. Yes. Amen. Yes. He has a next time abundant living and satisfying life. God has a next time for you. Amen. Amen. We've been talking about next times, but God has an abundant life that's satisfying. How would you like your soul to be satisfied? Amen. Amen. Can we turn this front light on too up here? Okay. All right, thank you. So this message this week will be out of Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 in verse 1 says this, Everyone who is thirsty, who thirsts, come to the waters. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money to buy, eat grain, to buy grain, eat, come, buy wine and milk, without money, without cost. That's what God's gifts are. I come with nothing, but yet He supplies, and He makes life satisfying. The invitation to the thirsty is, is so incredible. Nancy and I were talking about this this week. You know, Jesus went out to Galilee. He went out to the people that were discontented with the world system discontented with the way things were going, discontented with life. Jesus went out to seek and save those that were lost, that knew, hey, there's got to be something better. See, God holds out an invitation in this passage in particular to those who are willing to come. If you're unwilling to come, there's no point. I mean, you're not going to hear the invitation. So it included Israel, and it included the Gentile nations around Israel. So it includes all of us. Amen? Yeah. We've got an invitation. An invitation. To you that aren't content with the way that the world is running. To you that are not content as you see uh, pestilence in our, in our nation today. 
with the China virus, to you that are not content today, you that are not satisfied, God's got a next time, a satisfying, an abundant life for us. So God's invitation is not merely, point number one, for the basic stuff of life. That's not what he's talking about in that passage of Scripture. Rather, he invites us to come to him and find what is truly satisfying. You know, when you were a child, you drank milk. And after you got done with your milk, you cried still. Yeah. <laughs> you finish an apple, you want another one. Amen. Jesus, the Lord is not talking about those things. He says, I know those things that you need. I know those things. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So, what do we find in God's presence? What do we find in God's presence? These are some questions that you need to ask. What can He alone give that the world can't give us? These verses show us the failure that we experience when we try to find satisfaction and joy apart from God. We might spend a lifetime working hard and maybe purchasing a few things that will ultimately leave us frustrated and empty. You ever notice the next thing that you get? you quickly become dissatisfied with it? Yeah. It's the opposite of being satisfied. You got something and you were dissed by it. <laughs> Never mind. Some of you got it. <laughs> so we can spend a lifetime being frustrated and empty just by obtaining stuff. God, however, alone holds the satisfaction within Himself that we all seek. In Him, in Him, we ultimately find and we are delighted for what God has created us with a unique capacity to enjoy Him, not only now in the present, but also into eternity. It's satisfying forever. In Him and of Himself, He alone can bring satisfaction. You know, Mick Jagger said, I can't get no satisfaction. That's because he didn't know Jesus. He should have been asking the right questions. Amen. 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 But Psalm 37, 4 says this, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the petitions of your heart. Amen. He will align those requests. Amen. He will make those questions have answers and have satisfi satisfying answers. The scripture speaks of the prayer of thanksgiving regarding our relationship with God as well. In this the Lord makes known to us in, in Isaiah 55 what is really important daily. In Psalm 37, 4 as well. When we often focus, see, on the immediate, when we focus on the immediate concerns of our day, we end up dissatisfied with our day. But God knows, say God knows, God knows, what will be best. What will be best for us now and in the future. See, the things that we get, they don't seem best in the future. It may seem best for a minute. But it's not lasting. Nothing earthly can bring lasting satisfaction. Isaiah 55, 2 puts it this way. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Referring to the Word of God, why do you spend money for that? And your earnings for what does not satisfy? Listen to me carefully and eat what is good. Let your soul delight in abundance. Next time, remember... God has an invitation that is abundantly satisfying. 
Isaiah, the next verse, verse 3 says, Incline your ear and listen to me. Listen to me. Sometimes we do all the talking, don't we? Even when we go in prayer, we do all the talking. And actually, we need to do a little bit more listening and hearing what God has to say to me. Because with one word, He can satisfy your desires in your life. He can realign the things that you thought you needed into what is actually the best thing for you. So he says, incline your ear, listen to me. Hear, so that your soul may live. Deep down inside, that you may live. He wants to give a spark of life with one single word, one single phrase that will put you over the top when you're dissatisfied, when you're discontent. When things don't seem like they're quite working out. He says, eat what is good and let your soul delight in abundance. Notice he doesn't say, let your soul de delight in just a little bit. No, he says abundance. He's an abundant God. He made the universe. He, the, the, the heavens and the earth and the fullness thereof belong to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So here, what will make your soul satisfied and live? Point number two is seeking the Lord, is being prepared and excited to hear His response to our prayers. We need to be attentive to wanting to hear His response to us when we pray. One thing I, I want to do more in my life is, is to sit down in a chair after I pray and just listen. Because quite often during those times I heard God's voice. And you know, it, it satisfied my soul deep down inside. Amen? Not my soulish nature, but my soul. It answered the deep questions. And what I thought I want was, wasn't really what I needed. But I was able to hear what I actually needed to hear during that time. And God satisfied me. When the Lord answers our prayer, our actions also will determine whether we will live a life that produces satisfaction. Remember, not too long ago we talked about, you know, I wished I would have, I wished I could have, all those phrases that are of the past that you can't fix anyway. But today, you know, you can find satisfaction. Today, you can have abundant satisfaction. But when God speaks, see, we got to listen to Him and take steps into that abundant life that He wants to give us. He's not speaking. He says, you know, Isaiah said, speak, your servant listens. He hears. He's willing to take steps. So He'll go for us. Isaiah thought, you know, I'm inadequate. But he says, I'll go. I'll go, God, where you told me to go. Isaiah 55, 4, 6 says, listen carefully. I have appointed him, David, representing the Messiah in the Amplified Version, to be a witness to the nations regarding salvation, a leader and a commander to the peoples. In fact, you, Israel, will call a nation that you do not know and a nation that does not know you will run to you because the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. The nation of Israel is still a beacon to us. The Messiah, Jesus, came through the nation of Israel. And so as we look at that, you know, even on Christmas time, we look at Bethlehem, don't we? We look and we say, hey, that's where the Messiah came from. And in Him, we, we look to Him. Wise men seek the Lord. I'm almost ready to give a Christmas message here, and it's only October. Wise men seek Him, amen? Shepherds go looking when they hear from heaven. Seek the Lord, verse 6, when He... Why, he may be found. Call on him. 
for salvation. Why? He is near. Call on Him. He's near right now. Right in your state of dissatisfaction, right in your state of hunger, He was right there. He was right there for the woman at the well. He was right there even though she had been with many men and, and the current one she was with was not actually her husband and he explained all this to her and he, you know, he's trying to tell her, look, lady at the well, there's a reason you're dissatisfied. I want to give you living water, he says to her. And he goes, you know, our father Abraham built this well. What water are you going to give us that's better than that? And Jesus said, if you knew whom that was speaking to you, you would ask for living water. And really, you wouldn't thirst anymore. You would be satisfied. Amen? Amen. You would be satisfied. Next, an invitation to an abundantly satisfying life. Point number four is available. It's available to every single person on earth. But that will never be realized unless you seek the Lord above all else. In order to find satisfaction, you've got to seek the Lord above all else. Above all the stuff you think that you need to accumulate. He is it. He is your point of satisfaction. He is. Unless you seek the Lord above all else, that you think brings immediate or temporary contentment. You know what successful people do? Actually, if you even look at the world, deferred, deferred satisfaction. They'll work hard at obtaining one thing. This one thing they will work very hard at and they will get it one day. And so with the Lord, we need to work very hard because He is known as the pearl of high price. That you would sell everything else to get this one item, which is the Lord. That you would count it all as rubbish. As Paul put it, everything else is rubbish compared to, to, to Christ. Amen. To live for Christ is gain. That's what Paul said. So he was willing to go through persecution, but yet he was satisfied in the middle of prison. Paul knew what satisfaction meant. Unless you seek the Lord above all else that you think brings temporary contentment, you will never be content. You will never be content. You'll live in dissatisfaction all of your days. Isaiah 55, 7 through 9 says this, Let the wicked leave behind his ways, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. Let there be a change of mind, a change of heart. And he will have compassion and mercy on him. We held out mercy to the man today. Even though we had conflict earlier. God led me to say, you can come back. You know, basically, why are you burning your bridges now? You can come back. And he'll have compassion and mercy on him. And to our God, he will abundantly pardon. I pray for that man, I don't even know his name that was in the bathroom today, but Lord, I pray that Heavenly Father, he would find satisfying life in Jesus Christ. Everything else is water under the bridge. And God says this, he says, For I, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways are your ways, declares the Lord for us. High as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Look what he says. He transitions from thoughts to ways. So we can't just merely retain God in our heads. No, he's bigger than that. 
The one that produces satisfaction, that leads us into a satisfying life, his ways are the right ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Take and receive from me. Be satisfied in your mind. You went from your mind, your soul, every part of your being. God is discussing here in Isaiah 55 with you. He says, do you think the heavens could satisfy you? Yes, there's coming a day when Jesus is going to return. And I'm going to be flying around the heavens faster than the Starship Enterprise. God's got plans for us, amen? amen. amen. Like saying, I want to know if there's some aliens out there. Who the heck cares? We'll go find out. <laughs> amen? <laughs> Who the heck cares? It's God that satisfies. Amen. It's not even looking at the stars in the heavens. Yes, right. Although you can find incredible joy in God's creation, can't you? Yes. We took a ride up to the mountains up to Wonder View, it was called yesterday, right, Max? And uh, you had to pay an ex exorbitant amount of money for this food that was, and we asked, okay, I got this breakfast, it was a breakfast burrito, and you paid more than what it was worth, and we asked each other, said, so what do you think you'd rate that at in a scale of 10? The three? You paid like it was a 10, but it was a three, you know? But the view was beautiful, right? God's got much more than just a beautiful view. He's got much more than a substandard burrito. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, our human reason alone, point number five, will never bring us to God or be satisfied. It takes faith faith. Simple trust as a child. Rather, we confess we need to confess that we are just finite beings and He is infinite. That's where it starts. I'm like the, th the, 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 the you know, on a scale of 10, the burrito probably actually probably .25, right? And, 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 but God, he's off the charts, amen? He's beyond our human reason. So we must confess that the Lord is infinite and we are not. That's a simple truth, isn't it? He gets to be God, not us. We can't determine what satisfies, only He can. And not, not, not just at a three level, but abundantly satisfying. In verse 10 through 11, For as the earth and the snow come down from heaven, boy, we could use some of those, Lord, with these fires, oh, yes. and do not return without watering the earth, making it bare and sprout, and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so my word, which goes forth from my mouth, God says, it will not return to me void and useless without result. What I say to you, God says, will, not, will produce results. Okay? Okay? will not return to me void and useless without result, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter in which I sent it. God's got a plan. He sends His Word for a purpose, so that we would heed it, and it would produce those satisfying results. So I don't send it just so you could hear it. No, he says, my thoughts, yeah, they're great. They're higher than the heavens. But my ways are even better. Amen? Amen. When I s speak the Lord's word out of my mouth, 
I want you guys to practice that. Speak the Lord's word out of your mouth so you can hear it. And I support it with my actions. Or in other words, my belief. My next time becomes a time of abundant satisfaction. It's going to produce results. It's going to happen. Where God's word is heard and it's pursued, abundant, satisfying results occur. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 55, verse 12 through 13. For you'll go out from exile with joy. It's like saying, wow, I went from being a slave to this world system. And I was depressed. If we look at the situation with the coronavirus, it's worse that people are locked in than, and depressed. And, and the suicide rates are going up through the, through the roof. Okay? Because people are not satisfied. They're not satisfied with, you know, the status quo. We're not satisfied with the new norm, as they put it. They love to say the new norm. No, this ain't my new norm. This old mask thing. God gave me a smile. I don't want to wear a mask for the rest of my life. What the heck are y'all talking about? I don't know about you, but I'm going to live a satisfying life in the Lord. I'm believing for this virus to go. Hey, can we pray by faith today that this virus would just, hey, man, the crowns would fall off it. It would be a thing of the past. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that you would do an amazing thing in here. Lord God, that Heavenly Father, no one would come down with it, Lord God, but Heavenly Father, that uh, there'd be an incredible turnaround. And Heavenly Father, that just solutions from heaven would, would transpire regarding this, because we're the people of God. And we believe for abundant satisfaction, because we look up to you, because you made the heavens, God. You have an answer. And we know that you have an answer, and we're ready to receive it in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord God, for healing over this nation, healing over this country, healing over our Congress, healing over the Senate, healing over the state of Colorado. Yes, Lord. Father, we believe for that. <coughs> Amen. Amen. So from exile to joy, are you ready? And be led forth by the Lord himself, by God himself, with peace. Not only joy, but peace. Peace I give you, not as the world gives peace do I give, leave you, Jesus said. The mountains and the hills will break forth with shouts of joy before you. Boy, I wanted to shout when I seen those autumn trees up there. God is amazing. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands instead of, the th instead of the thorn bush and the cypress tree will grow. Instead of the nettle and the, the myrtle tree will grow. And there, you know what this is reminiscent of? This is reminiscent of the Garden of Eden. All the days of your life, the curse after they, you know, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is they ate from their own knowledge. They decided what was right and wrong as if they were God or something. They didn't listen to God. God supplied them abundance, okay? He says, of every tree in the field you can eat, everything you can eat, except for this one tree here in the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the day that you eat from that, you will die spiritually. You'll become dissatisfied. But the big lie was this. And it still goes on today. If only I get this. If only I get that. Yet God has supplied so many things that He says that you can partake of in Him. But yet all the time we want to think that we know best. And we follow that old lie that the serpent, the devil, supplied in the garden that, you know, you won't die. In the day that you eat from that knowledge of your own head, the day that you eat from that knowledge, you'll become like God. How's that working out for you? Not so good. Very dissatisfying, huh? 
the myrtle tree will grow. I have a picture of the myrtle tree. Look at that. Ooh, that's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's like a giant lilac bush. Yeah. In the springtime, it's so beautiful to look at. Yeah. It's not like a thorn and a thistle that I produce in my life. I can't produce that. Nope. God produced that. I want to tell you something maybe you want to know. This whole world is based on a seed. And the seed that you need to receive is the seed of God in your life. The seed that you need to receive is the seed of God in your life. You're born into this world from a seed, from your father's seed. Every tree, everything on earth is, is based on a seed. Think about it. It's always been God's way, not evolution. Seeds. Think about it. There's such deception in the world today. And we don't want to eat from deception, do we? We want to know the truth. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So if you're dissatisfied with lies, you come to the right place here today. Because we're going to speak the truth. Amen. We're going to live like that. We're going to flourish. Amen. We're going to look like we got some water and some life in us. And that things are beautiful that are produced around us. Amen. Solomon, as he sought God's wisdom, he, silver became commonplace. He was the most wealthiest man that ever lived on earth. Bar none. Bill Gates, whoever you can think of. Solomon had more wealth. Why? Because he asked God. God for wisdom to be able to rule the nation. He says, because you didn't ask for the death of your enemies, because you didn't ask for this, because you didn't ask for that, but you came to me and asked for wisdom to go in and out and, 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 and help these people, I'm going to provide you the riches and everything else that goes with it to be able to rule successfully. And gold was flourishing in Israel in those days. So, uh, gold, uh, uh, silver was just common. Amen? We got a coin shortage, they say, in our, in our country today. I don't buy it. That's not true. I don't buy it. I get quarters all the time to watch. That's a funny. That's a joke. That's a joke. Got a coin shortage. I don't buy it. Ah. All right. That's a lie. I'm Amen. So the Believer's Bible Commentary says this about these scriptures. Those that seek the Lord will leave the land of their captivity. With joy. They'll leave their dissatisfaction gladly. And travel home in peace. All nature will rejoice with our liberation. Everything looks beautiful when you're with God. Amen? Amen. The land will enjoy freedom from the curse, with its resulting in fruitfulness instead of thorns and briars. Cypress, look up a cypress tree. We'll have to look up. I meant to put a picture of that. Contrast thorns with this beautiful myrtle tree that we looked at. All the foregoing millennial, millennial reign of Christ, that's a thousand year reign of Christ on earth, will bring the Lord renown. It will be an everlasting sign. This earth is going to become a paradise for a while. After the Antichrist is done away with and thrown into the pit of hell which he came from, after all that's taken place, and Jesus is coming back soon, many people are really dreaming about this and saying and coming out with this, because we look at the world today, there's unprecedented things going on, things that have never happened before. The fool says things have been going on always as they have always been, but the dissatisfied person says there's got to be something better. And, and, you know, this millennial reign that's coming here on earth, the odd thing about it is that the earth will be restored and beautiful. Everybody's talking about, hey, you know what, if I pursue the Green New Deal, that's going to work out. That's man's way of trying to fix things, amen? God is going to fix this place. Amen? And, and people are going to see it. 
And yet there are going to be some that will choose something else, even in the thousand-year reign of Christ. And then God is going to wrap this whole thing up, and the ones that really follow him, the ones that really love him, they'll be with him forever. Amen. Their satisfaction, there will be no end. So much so that you will do nothing. You, you, you want to worship him so much. Because you'll know that he brings the satisfaction that you really needed. And he saved me from everything. Only in chasing Jesus Christ alone. Not, not just the new heavens and the new earth. But chasing him alone. Will we ever have an eternal, eternally lasting, abundantly satisfying life? That's why scripture talks about in Christ. Throughout Scripture, when you read it, it says, In Christ, in Him, are these things. In Him. Both now, in this present time, and forevermore. Christ is the, the pearl of high price. He's, he's the, 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 the pearl of satisfaction. He in Himself is that. So let's review. God's invitation is not merely for basic stuff of life. Rather, He invites us to come to Him and find what's truly satisfying, what's truly fulfilling. Seeking the Lord is being prepared and excited to hear His response to our prayers. Every day we should get up and say, what is He going to say now? I can't wait to hear when the Lord answers our prayers, our actions will determine whether we will live a life that produces satisfaction. Well, you mean I can live a life and all of a sudden it can become satisfying? Yeah. If you chase Christ, it will become that way. You'll turn around and say, man, I, I could have never figured this out. I never knew it could have turned out this good. But it did. Point number four, next, an invitation to an abundantly satisfying life is available, but that will never be realized unless you seek God above everything else that you think brings immediate contentment. It's time to lay down the drugs. It's time to lay down all those things that God is bringing to your mind here today that you know is not satisfying you. And trust Him. To heal you and bring satisfaction in your life. Our human reason alone, see, it never brings us to God. Or to be satisfied. Rather, we must confess that we are, you know, we're finite. We're, we're just, we've got these walls. You know, we are, we're limited in our thinking, but he's infinite in his scope. So we must come to him by faith like a child, ready to receive. When we speak God's word and support it with our actions of our belief, the actions, we turn around and we say, wow, I'm abundantly satisfied. Amen. What he does and what he says, when I do it, it produces incredible results. See, only in chasing Jesus Christ Will I ever have an eternally satisfying life? Only then will I be satisfied, both now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. Pray with me. Say, Lord, Lord I, know I know that chasing my own personal desires does not bring, not bring abundant, abundant satisfaction. satisfaction. Only when I seek you, Lord Jesus, only when I seek you, Lord Jesus am, I am I truly satisfied. Only by listening, only by listening to, your word, to your word, speaking it, speaking it and, applying it, and applying it, can eternally, eternally satisfying Results occur. I want to make sure everybody knows Jesus Christ because he is the source of satisfaction. Let's pray. Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. 
Without you, you, there's no satisfaction. satisfaction. I know that you died for my sins. sins. To liberate me me. from bondage, bondage. from exile, exile. from you. you. I know that you rose from the dead, that I could have have eternal satisfaction satisfaction in in you alone. Thank you for saving me. me. Rock's praise is going to come up and we're going to do some worship. So I want you to join us here. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be waiting here for you. Because we really need to hear from God. Be satisfied. Yes. We're coming to him excited. To see what he's going to do. So go ahead and stand if you're able to. And join us in worship. And please help me sing. I appreciate it. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. He is worthy of all of that praise. <laughs> so well, let me just pray a benediction over all of us. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for helping us today, Lord. I thank you that you're going to go with us. Lord, we don't leave you here at the door when we exit. But Lord, I thank you. You go with us. You've promised to never leave us or forsake us, Lord. And so I just pray that each of us just continues to reach out to you for the rest of this day and throughout the week, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you all for coming. We could use some guys to help us carry some big stuff upstairs, so many hands make light work. Like I say, I'm be not plenty. working today. <laughs> so a couple guys, strong guys, come on up here. You know, ones that have wore their deodorant and feel strong. Okay. Also, we're going to open up the resource room. Uh, so we have clothing, food bags, hygiene, if you'd like that. Um, in just a few minutes, Sandy will be in there. And we do ask, though, that you have all your stuff in this room gathered before you go through there. Because we kind of, that's how the traffic pattern goes. It goes out the back. So, <laughs> so you won't come back into here. Okay, thank you. So God bless.